everybody. I'm sorry, I was experiencing some weird stuff. Sometimes uh, Hangouts is getting confused about which camera to pick because I have two. And it decided that it didn't want to see this camera. So I had to restart the, <laughs> the whole process. So, hi, Carolyn, Sabine, Sonia, Cherry, Chris, and Ellen. Hello. So, uh, let me first get this camera better focused. Get us a little bit more light. There we go. Now, uh, hi, June. Hi, Anna. So first, I will show you how to make something like this, which is absolutely beautiful. And you can use all your flower cane remnants. Uh, honestly, on these ones, I wasn't very good. I was supposed to warm my canes a little bit more. Hi, Lila. Hi, Donna. Hi, Darice. Um, and then it all, I'm telling you, it all depends on how my back feels. We are still experiencing some rain and stuff. And I would be very grateful if in about 15 minutes, if you don't say, see me saying anything, you'd remind me to go take my pain pill. Because once pain is there, it's much harder to get rid of than just controlling it, you know, by taking the pill at regular intervals. So if I am good enough, then we're going to do something like this. And then we will do uh, what uh, Teresa Pandora Salgadi, Salgado uh, says, uh, calls, um, oh, how does she, uh, I'm, I'm just having a brain fart. Um, hold on, I need to, to look for it. It's Pandorified and give me just a second. And of course, you had to do Pandorified. Let me just check with the I, on her channel because i know that it's the name of the she has the name of one video okay oh god who watches pandora a lot not kaleidoscope. No, it's when she actually sculpts the canes. Uh, I thought that she had it in the in the name of one me video. It starts with an S. Oh, I would have to listen to it. Uh, I'm sorry, I just cannot remember. It will probably come to me. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, June. Hi, Lena. Hi, Tina. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Frontal. Yeah, I, I told you, it will come to me, but uh, let's start with it. And then if I'm still good, we'll do a short uh, steampunk art. I know I did, uh, but you know what I'm talking about, Donna, right? It's not scarified. It's, it, it sounds like scarified. Anyway, if I'm still good enough, we'll do, I know I did the steampunk last year, but... Uh, We'll try and do a really easy one. Okay, so if you see on this one, it's on the on the on a per lesson that's got again some of those. Let me 
focus it. That's doing all kinds of nice uh, scintillating stuff. And I'll show you real quick how to do one of those. <laughs> Thank you, Lena. Okay, so I have here a piece that's pretty much, uh, this is what happens when you do a, when you're trying to do a very dark, um, maybe I should get another piece that's lighter than this, because I notice it's hard to see this one. But anyway, the, the result is something like this. Now, as a secret, this kind of stuff, when you're trying to put it and when you have your uh, flower canes wrapped in translucent, you have to be aware of the fact that that edge of translucent is going to show. And uh, the darker the clay you're putting it on, if you're not very, very, uh, if you're not an expert at cutting very thin slices, or if you don't have uh, one of those uh, Lucy cutting things, it's going to be visible. And you want to avoid that. Hi, Christy. Uh, so you want to do this on something, of course you can do it on white. On white, it would be the less uh, noticeable. But you can do on some, um, uh, you know, lighter colored uh, metallic or pearlescent. And you can get that very easily by simply putting a dab of color into a, a white pearl. What I did here, I had, uh, this is practically a lighter, this. It was about a, a pearl with one, one part pearl, one quarter of uh, gold. And then I added a bit of fuchsia, just a little bit about this much. And this was twice as big because I used half of it for this. But just to show you how to do this specific thing, remember that as you manipulate the pearlescent, it will give you all kinds of beautiful effects. And you've seen that on, uh, on my latest heart tutorial, tutorial videos. And I will show you how you can obtain very easily this specific one. You first, of course, get your pearlescent. Uh, hi, Tia Lisa. Hi, Christy. Uh, the a pearlescent or metallic to do the mica sheen so that to get all your mica particles aligned. And then what you need to do is just cut it in strips. and then simply twirl the strips. And this will show on any color of pearlescent or... Uh... Yeah, but not everybody can do that, Lena. You know, there are people who cannot really work with their hands a lot. So... And the same as not everybody can afford. Most people cannot afford to buy one of the Lucy clay tools. They are super expensive. So unless you really have a business, it's not justifiable. So see, now I have all these nice and twirled. So all I do is to get them together. And then I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to simply, oops, simply get it. This is a very small piece. I normally don't do this with such small pieces. And you can use your Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe you should do a Facebook post on that to show others how to do it. And I'll, uh, I promise I will share it on the Kalyana Facebook page, just in case more people want to do that. Okay, so once you got it fairly consolidated, you simply make sure that it's well attached to the tile and then cut it in half. And on how many things I always keep to saying that the beauty is on the inside. And you see, you got just one single color of pearlescent and I'll show you here. Skained, skained, that's it, skained. Skained, that's how you, she calls it. Thank you so much, Skained, yeah. So we are going to do something to that effect. But let me first show you how this looks, even if it's not. And you know how the metallics and pearlescents, they get an extra layer of shininess once they are baked and uh, sanded and buffed. But you can imagine how pretty this one looks. See? So, yeah. So, yeah, this is exactly what I did, only it was on something that was a lighter gold made with white pearl and a little bit of gold, to which I added a pinch of fuchsia. So, to start with, I got a piece of scrap clay. And you don't really care about the color of scrub because we are going to cover it. After I make this, we are going to make a backing and the bezel for this. So let's get this a little bit larger because you want to make it fairly large. I mean, you want to make it as large as it would accommodate your cutter. And uh, for all these tutorials, I prefer to choose this cutter because it's large enough for me to show you how to work on things. But of course, um, you can work with smaller cutters. I don't understand clay measuring sticker, measuring sticks. On that one, I don't understand. What would you do with clay measuring sticks? And you don't want to bring it all the way to the size of the cutter. Hi, Beth, but close. So I'm going to take this and you see how pretty it is. Bonsoir, Dominique. And then careful because you don't want to trap air here. Just go like this. And this way you, you're sure that you didn't trap no air in here. And then of course, work on it a bit more. And we are pretty much ready to start working with the canes. Okay, now let's get the canes. And I do have uh, a few flower canes out there. And I knew that I had a smaller one somewhere here, but I cannot find it. Oh, there it is. Uh, this is the violet flower. And I will put a, a link. Let me get it. Because it's a very simple one, but it's very pretty.
Okay, it's the simple violet flower cane. That's how it's called. And then there are more. I have a whole playlist. I will share it with you here in a minute. And there we go. If you want to And you can use any of these flower canes or make your own or get from, uh, there are a lot of flower cane tutorials online. Hi, Darlene. Did I miss you, Lemmy? Hi. Okay, so I'm going to use this one and actually I'm going to make a few smaller ones and it's up to you, you can use all kinds of uh, uh, colors color combinations if you want you can go just with uh small flowers for a better look i would suggest to uh, use different sizes of flowers uh, you can get them to be more on one side of the heart or to cover the whole heart or to make like a little bouquet and that you've seen on the uh, dark roses uh, tutorial that I posted last week. So I'm slowly, slowly reducing this a little bit more and you can see that the core is not, it's still kind of cold because I'm getting the sides coming out yeah but don't forget that you need to leave that uh, pad glued for about 24 hours to make sure that it will not come off okay uh, give me just a second I'm going to take my pill Okay, there was a combined effort, I guess. The blanket is off the bed. I think it was a combined effort of Seamus and Whisper. Oh, good. Then it had enough time. Ah, tu vas pouvoir le, le regarder après, Dominique. Thank you, Cherry. Okay, so I got a smaller flower here. Uh, another thing is that you have to think that there will be a slight effect of floating. If you can see how some of these flowers seem to be a little bit more forward than others. Let me refocus again. See how they seem to be floating. But what I was telling you, see right here, you can see the edge of the, and here too, you can see the edge of the wrapping. 
that's why you have to be able to cut fairly thin otherwise you will see this of course you can work on it and remove it before you put it there but it's a lot of work to do something like that and uh, just to give you a, an example of something that you can do uh, to make it really look like mille fiori you can um, reduce your flower canes really small and then put them together and then make this kind of cane and you can see some of these uh flowers are barely two millimeters big but you can use this and i have a pink one too hold on let me get to it but you can make these and uh, this is especially nice when you're trying to do okay i just had it uh, when you're trying to do beads, Mille Fiori beads. See, this is uh, pink and blue. But yeah, you can do all kinds of designs. And it's up to you what flowers you choose. What is old? I already did, Lila. Hi, Elaine. Oh, it should be, because that's what I used. I used Loctite as well. Okay, now, uh, this is what I'm going to use. And remember that this is these are those Gilly blades that I keep um, recommending. And uh, by the way, uh, Trish now has them. Of course, she has them separate, the 8-inch one and the 4-inch one. I use this one for shaving uh, mica shifts and mokumegane and stuff and this one for cut slicing canes and now she has them in a package you get both of them at, at a lower price than it was to get separately one of those and one of those anyway so let's go ahead let me pick what other stuff i had prepared because i did warm up a few of them let me just find them it's a whole box here of stuff because when they are not warmed up they are definitely going to crack and that's why i showed you here a few of them have cracked and i'm going to look i think that on the website i have some flower stuff that's not on youtube but i'll have to check on that Okay, I have a few. As they have to be fairly small. You can see why they have to be fairly small. You don't I mean, of course you can put a whole big one if you want. But uh, as I said, it's up to you how you want to do your which canes you want to do and which you don't. This one is also on YouTube. Really? I, is there a three inch, inch one? I wasn't aware of a three inch one. Okay, let me get a piece of this to get it smaller. Okay, this should be good. And let's get all of this because that's enough. And theoretically, I have something like this to cover, right? So let's cut a few slices.
and as you know it's a little hard for me to cut properly because of my eyesight or lack thereof yeah i need to go soon again for my to see my eye doctor i'm actually seeing an eye specialist because uh, two years ago, I had, almost two years ago, I had uh, not a retinal detachment, just a vitreous detachment, but that's the precursor to retinal detachments. And if you, I have the thing, you know, if I notice any kind of changes in my vision that appear suddenly, I have to just jump in a cab and go get there. And the fact that I have migraine, eye auras, migraines, doesn't help because sometimes you don't know if what are those. Are they just a regular eye migraine aura or can they signify retinal detachment? So yeah but it's definitely not helping when i'm trying to show you stuff so we are doing kind of like a wild flowers thingy here and yeah even if you cut just a piece it's okay because you can hide it behind another slice see how i cut here half and i am going to hide it and if i put it here it's going to be too far I'm going to hide it behind another one. And let's get some violets. Place a violet here to hide this one. See, this is the exact same violet that's here. At least that's what I think. That's what it is. Hmm? No, it's not. It's a different violet. This is a different violet than than the simple. Let me see which of them is. The... <laughs> I forgot. One of these two is the simple violet flower, but they are different. This one has a yellow cord. This one has a black cord. This one has lines. This one doesn't. One of them is a violet. I have so many flower canes that it's not even funny. Let's grab one of these. Let's grab one of these. This is also is on a tutorial. It's and I'm showing the simplest way to make a flower cane. It's in the beginner canes list. And of course you can make uh, you can place uh, leaf canes. I just I have no idea what I did with my leaf, leaf canes, honestly. And this one is kind of hard. This is a sunflower. Let me just try to warm up just the end of the cane. Hopefully it won't crack. And I'm going to warm it up a little bit with my fingers like this too. And place it somewhere here. No, let's place it here and cover up 
around here with some more. Of course, it always helps when you're trying to use the sharp edge. of the blade and there I have some itty bitty but as a general idea don't store your canes reduced because in order to warm them up properly you need to reduce them a little bit and if they are already reduced to smithereens that's not a lot of stuff that you can do Okay, let me get another small one here. Let me get one of these. Now, what we are going to do is to flatten this thing. And you can leave it like this. You can push with your finger first. Because what you need to do is to press this in the clay. Because you don't want when you start uh, sanding, you don't want to sand your cane slices off. So you need to press them in the clay. That's why I made such a, f a fairly thick backing layer okay let me catch up yeah i do i have permanent floaters elaine from the uh thing that i i had hi colleen let me see if i Okay, Lena, just uh, make a, a post or uh, message me or email me so I can get the idea of what you're trying to say. That's the, the best thing. Because it's hard to make me understand on a live when I'm trying to focus both at what I'm doing and on the chat. And that's why I cannot keep with it up with the chat because I can't anymore. As I said many times, I used to be a wonderful multitasker, but now I'm happy if I can do one thing without messing up. Yeah, and you can make all kinds of things. You can make beads, you can make necklaces, you can make bracelets. They all look beautiful. If you can, uh, I think I made the tutorial last year. If you can cut the slices thin enough, you can put them on black. And that way, when you sand and buff, it will look gorgeous. It will look like one of those Japanese, uh, you know, when they have that those wood paintings or wood uh, inclusions that look beautiful. Now, if you want to be even more uh, safe in the knowledge that you will not fully sand the, the slices, Hi Witch Willow, you can uh, top everything with a very, 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 very thin layer of uh, translucent. But it has to be the thinnest manageable that you can make it. So let me get a piece of translucent here.
but as I said, you want it super, super thin. So I'm going to go thinner than this. Yes, it's Sunday and I need to do to clean my machine, but okay, what's going on there? Okay. And the same as before, because it would be a real disaster if you uh, trap air on this one. Go very, very, very careful. I have a little piece here. I have a little spot here that didn't come out very good. And then, of course, flatten everything nicely. Yes, the carnation cane would be. As I said, I'm going to do to start doing a lot of flower stuff after Valentine's Day, but I wanted to dedicate the first two weeks of February to making all kinds of Valentine's Day stuff, hearts and things. Okay. No. Sorry, but I always put this away in its case when I'm done with it, because otherwise I lose it. And it's so small. And now we can place it here. I think I was going to go pretty much like this. Let's see how that works. Yeah, I'm gonna go like this. So we got this done, remove the cutter, and then I'm going to gently bevel the thing. See how this one is beveled? That's how you do it. And I showed it to you in the other tutorials with hearts. And not only. And remember, don't worry much about this one because this one you can fix it with a few swipes of sandpaper. I usually start, unless I need to do a lot of uh, fixing up of the edge, I usually start with the 320 grit, then I move to 400, 600, 800, 1000, and then depending on what I am sanding, depending on how shiny I want it to be, then I might move above. 1,000 all the way up to 2,500. 
but uh, here you have to be very careful because, as I said, depending what you are preparing for buffing. Number one, uh, certain patterns, if you have certain patterns on your cabochons or focals or whatever, and if you make that piece too shiny, too glossy, the patterns will be barely noticeable. So you would have worked for a long time for not being able to see much of what you worked on. Uh, the other thing is that, let's say that you're working with gemstones. If you want to make gems for gemstones, uh, the way that you buff them, again, is very important because uh, gemstone, the harder a gemstone, the harder a material is, the, the glossier it would be once it's polished. Gemstones' uh, hardiness is measure, measured on what's called the MOS, M-O-H-S scale. And for example, if you are making something that imitates a gemstone that has a high hardiness, of course you want to make it as shiny as possible. But if you're making a gemstone like, let's say, a turquoise, turquoise is very soft. Uh, as a matter of fact, out of the whole quantity of turquoise mined, maybe, maybe 20% is gemstone quality. It can actually be uh, cut and polished. Uh, the rest is too soft to, to do that. Uh, that's why they make, they just get the crumbs and then they infuse it with resin and other things to make it. That's the main difference between a real good quality turquoise and an artificially made one reconstituted turquoise is the shininess. A real good quality turquoise that is value, can be valued at thousands of dollars is not very shiny. Oh, I have quite a bit of tutorials out there and I will revisit them. I have uh, with the translucent floating canes and other stuff, but you can see. And to be very honest, this one uh, was a little bit thick. So uh, what I did was simply to first uh, sand it with 150 grit, then 240, then 320. But I didn't place it very well because I was in a hurry to have it done for the already done for the live. Um, so you can start uh, sanding it with a much lower grit to get rid of some of the translucent if it's not translucent enough and then move up more okay now let's get this one and let's work on it a little bit let's give it a backing and let's make a bezel for it because obviously you need to put a bail and uh, when it's thinner it, it, the easiest way it's uh, this no it's a fondant working tile now, see, a whiteboard, I never thought of that, but I don't think that the whiteboard is very resistant to scratches. This is actually glass. It's a tempered glass. I've been looking for a tempered glass that doesn't have a glare, but I wasn't able to find one. And I tried with marble. I would have to try with a white marble because the... Uh, marble that I had somebody got it for me and I was very thankful but it's a little bit too dark and it doesn't show very good yeah you can do stained glass you can do a whole bunch of stuff with translucent clay okay so I'm placing my piece on wax paper because I want to be able to lift it without handling it when I when time comes to put it in the oven. 
and just a minute i need to go get some clay and uh, drink of water Yeah, I'm sorry, I ran out of bottled stuff, small bottles, that is. And I don't want to bring stuff in a glass or in a cup here, because I don't want to topple it. Okay, now it depends on how thick you want to make it. You can go with the thickest setting or you can go with the much thinner. And I think I'm going to go with the thinner one. Okay, now if you're asking what color it is, I don't know, it's probably gold mixed with some red or something. I have a full thing of all kinds of colors of pearlescence and metallics and stuff. Like you see, I, I love this color. This is actually a metallic that uh, gives super strong mica shift effects. So I have a whole bunch of trials on this now i would honestly go for this i wouldn't go with the textured again i would go with the um, a mica shift of sorts and let me think what do i want let me grab a, a folder actually no let's do the donna Cato.
actually not. I decided to go on this, and by the way, I got a whole bunch of new uh, folders and stamps that uh, work beautiful for mica shifts and stuff like that. So this is a Doris that I got with my last polyclay play order. Now let me see. And here's a tip about when you're doing mica shift using the embossing folder. Oh God, it was, it's my attempts, okay? So it's got in it black, graphite, bronze, and uh, some of the black mica powder in the decorum. Okay, so with the embossing folders, the embossing folders give you out of all the texture sheets that do not go through the pasta machine, like the makings or the Ellen Braille or the long red ones, uh, the embossing folders are about, about the best to use for mica shift. And uh, there are two ways to, to use them. Obviously, they have an ini and an outie. So on one side, uh, the design would be in, so that when you press it on the clay, you'll have ridges. See how these are little flowers. Let me see how these are daisies. And this has the outlines in there so that when you're pressing it on the clay, the outlines will be outwards. And on this side, the outlines are coming out of the plastic so that when you press it in the clay, it, they will go in. Now, this uh, is very interesting because it will define how your mica shift is going to look. And why is that? Because it will change, and I can actually show you the difference real quick. So it will change the way that the mica shift itself is going to look. So this is on the outie. See how the lines are in the clay. And this is on the any. And you'll see the differences that it makes on and see on this one the lines would be out of the clay see the difference this the lines are in the clay, this, the lines are out of the clay. And let's see how that influences the way your mica shift uh, is going to do. So always when doing, preparing to shape mica shift, I always clean first the blade. And then I'm going to use armor roll as my release. And I know some people say, oh, yeah, but armor roll is expensive. Well, I had this bottle for close to two years, and it's not, I'm at about three quarters still full. So, considering how long it lasts, it's not expensive at all. So, this is the one with the lines inside. It's okay, Beth. No worries. So, Let's do a little bit of shaving here. I'm trying not to hurry and mess up stuff. But this is an absolutely uh, beautiful embossing thing. Yeah, we'll do some daisies towards end of March. 
We'll do quite a bit of daisies. Remember that I did a daisy flower cane last year with, and that was a realistic one. Did anybody try it? We might work on some. I was planning on doing uh, flower canes both for um, beginners and for more advanced. Okay, so this is one. Let's do the other one. I'm not doing a completely full, full uh, mica shift shaving. Just want to show you the differences and how important it is. What arrival in September? Oh, you're getting a baby. A grandbaby. That is so exciting and so awesome. Yeah, and talking about how you shave your mica shift, uh, there are people who bend their blade a lot. I prefer to hold my blade almost parallel because uh, I notice that if I bend it, I'm in danger to gouge. And uh, that if I go like this, I'm in less danger to gouge because remember that I have my hands twitch sometimes. So, I'm not trying to tote one method over another because it's how everybody feels. It's the best for them. But I can tell you one thing that uh, on the, like on the satin slice, I was having so much trouble after I started getting all kinds of side effects from the chemo and stuff. But once I saw that uh, video Lisa Pavelka posted with the pivot blade, oh my God, that was a life savior. I'm only using that now. I'm not even trying to do it differently. Okay, now let's gather this and then flatten these up a little bit so you can see the difference of how it changes the way the mica ship looks depending on which side of the embossing folder you use and that is val valid also for the makings uh, texture because those also have are two-sided and i always advise to use the wax paper because see how the wax paper sticks to the clay and wherever it's not stuck that means that you have a dip in the clay there and you need to burnish some more generally speaking try not to roll too much because if you roll you can start rearranging the mica particles and you lose the whole mica shift if you have to go through the pasta machine go only once and another uh, tip whenever you want to make a stronger mica shift mix in the pearlescent or metallic uh do it like a two two thirds the pearlescent metallic and one third translucent because that will enhance the mica shift effect totally totally Okay, that should be good because I'm not going for it's just to show you the difference. It's just the way that the, the things look. Let me focus properly.
seen the difference? When you have the lines coming out of the clay, the mica shift will be focused mostly on those lines because you practically, that's the whole thing that moved. But when you have the lines going in, the mica shift will be deeper. See, compare, for example, these two. See how much deeper the 3D effect looks on the one that went in compared to the one that went out. And why is that? Because there's more displacement on the one that went in and you're cutting more through the displacement while here you're cutting more th just through the lines. See, that's the, the biggest difference. How this mica shift has more of a 3D effect than the one on here. So you always want to use the side of the embossing folder where the lines are sticking out, not where the lines are going in. Okay, now, could this be enough? Yeah, I think we are good. focus this and catch up on the chat. Fortnite. Bang. <laughs> okay. Now, let's place this on. And we need some bacon bond. Now, watch this. Uh, and this can sometimes happen when you place your uh, a sheet of clay really fast on your baking tile. You might trap air. And that air will translate because that's how I put it very fast. I didn't have time to, as I said, I wanted to be ready for the live with a piece already done. But see how I have, these are the trapped air part. So what I want to do, because I don't want, if I place a thin piece there, I don't want it to be all wet dips. So I'm going to gently place a few very thin, thin, thin pieces here. how the extra just comes off. And always whenever you're using a bacon bond on something that's got a buffed thing, and you always want to make sure and clean the buffed area because I had some dirty fingers pressing on the underneath. And then we simply place this. Hi, Catherine. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. And I personally prefer it over talcum. I think that talcum makes the clay a little gritty. Now, what will happen even if you still have these dips here and you start sanding, 
um, I said it a few times. Uh, initially, the mica shift was not done with shaving because back in the 80s and early 90s, there weren't so many awesome blades and so many awesome things and tools and stuff. So to obtain a proper mica shift, we would simply sand <laughs> after pressing the texture. So if you have to sand the mica shift, don't be uh, scared that you're going to lose the mica shift. Not at all. It's going to still be there. Of course, unless you start sanding below the, the lever where your texture went. Now, of course, you can place a bezel on this if you want, but I personally, you know how I like stuff that's more simple and elegant, even if sometimes I do stuff that's all with all kinds of glitz and stuff. But generally speaking, I prefer stuff that's simpler and more elegant. And when I'm talking about uh, stuff like hearts and things that, don't really have any kind of Victorian or anything motif. I don't see the reason why I should even place a bezel on it or a frame. So what you're trying to do is to bring this back on an angle as well. So that it will be a beautiful effect from the back as well and the fact that the back has daisies it will definitely okay i lost okay yeah judy less than you think honestly <laughs> there are not that many people who ordered it Probably in time there will be more who ordered, but it's also a matter of uh, when people get paid. And remember, we just got out of a, a time when finances were a little bit strained, strained right after the holidays, and maybe not everybody can afford to get the sanding stuff. Now on this, of course, the, if you want to do a delicate frame, <clears throat> just make sure that you got all this nicely straightened up. But yeah, I have uh, I have found, remember also that uh, a lot of my subscribers are not from the US. So they cannot order from Amazon. And by the feedback that I got, the prices on that little pedicure wand are much higher in Europe. And uh, that's why I recommend it also. And I gave also the link for uh, AliExpress. OK, so what you want to do, and you want, number one, you want a longer stretch. 
And you can leave my card shift on it if you want. But you want a stretch that would go at least this on half of a of the heart. So this will definitely do it. I'm telling you that little cane bender, the thinner one. It's so easy to lose. And we want to go. It's not that thin. What is thin? It's not thin. Okay. Oh, you mean your uh, your stamp is thin? So you saw I cut at a 45 degrees angle. And I'm going to go for about the size of my, the thickness of my heart. And then get a second one. And this should be it. I will show you here in a minute where to, how to do a stamp that wouldn't break. You want to make it a handle. Now remember, most of this is raw clay, so you don't really have to worry about using bacon bond. So, number one, check it on the edge with your back. Let's do first this one. So you must make sure that it is at the same height all around. Okay, I need the thin one. And then very gently turn it around and again. You have to be very delicate when you're doing this. Because you don't want to make it start sliding around. And yes, you can use these as uh, texture as well i generally like the uh, curly i think it's called curly beard of makings because when you cut it it just leaves the proper raised areas that work beautiful for frames just that be very careful whenever you're using texture Make sure that you match it here because I've seen a lot of uh, cases when uh, people have put textured uh, line for the bezel, but then when they got here, one looks in one way, one looks in the other way. They didn't uh, take any time to match the stuff that's joining in here. And the same thing for this. And again, look at the back. You want the back to be about half a millimeter above the back edge. And 
again very gently. And that's pretty much, I have to fix this, but I cannot do it under the camera. I'm sorry, I just can't. I have to bring it really close to my nose to be able to see. And if you want to make this edge even better, um, well, I have no idea what you're talking about, Lena. Now, I was talking about the pedicure one that I showed how to do sanding with in my, uh, in a live I posted last week. Yeah, I'll show you here in a minute. So you just use some alcohol. And you very gently rub the edges. You can do some on this one, but afterwards you'll have to wipe with alcohol the front because you might have uh, some other stuff. Okay, while well, this is getting dry, let me look for that stamp stuff that I was talking about. See? This is my initial stamp. So what you want to do is to make it pretty much like a stick. And the way that I did it, I actually first did a piece of clay with all the stuff in using a thin sculpting tool. I baked that and then I made this and I took the imprint of it. So this is the KD. Okay. So that's pretty much and I have a whole bunch of other small these are generally with the like prehistoric drawings and stuff and I made them all like that it's a whole bunch of them but try and make a uh, this kind of base on it because then, then you won't have to worry about it breaking. Okay. And they make fairly deep stuff. 
Okay. Now I'm not going to make a new a new one because I'll probably be able to be on for at most like ten or fifteen more minutes. I'm starting to hurt. It's been already uh, an hour and a half almost. And I am so proud of myself. But I'll show you the principle under the the scanning your let me find a piece of something that's already baked that I don't mind about. I should have some stuff here. Okay, here's a piece of those for amylite experiments. So, let's see. If I'm grabbing a, a flower... And on this you want to make them about at least two one millimeter you can make them even thicker but number one of course you'll place a dollop of bacon bond if you're working on baked clay and then i have to take off my eyeglasses which is a pain when you're wearing headphones. And then take out the in-betweens. This is the best done with uh, flower canes that do not need a lot of wrappings because there are quite a bit of flower canes that you don't need to do wrapping for. So you practically first remove the translucent that's in between the petals. You don't have to worry much about the one that's on top of the petals from the wrapping. And then you can use a sculpting tool or the etch and pearl or whatever. Actually, let me grab an etch and pearl, the smallest one. Here we go. Because with the etch and pearl, you have the, the thing on the back. So let's first delimitate the middle with the etch and pearl. See how it already popped up. And you already have a more sculpted effect. And then what I would do, I would just come and flatten back the end of the petals. And that way you'll have, you'll have a almost ceramic-like detail okay I put my eyeglasses back on and refocus See how it is now. A little bit sculpted, so when you're going to bake it, the these little ends will become translucent and the whole flower will pop out. So that's the, the idea behind putting these. You already get yourself a, a hard cabochon. Okay. Let me catch up on it. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. Yes, Scalpy 3 and Scalpy Bake Shop and stuff, you don't want to use that. Yeah, I hope to catch up on my stuff because I'm planning on something and it's going to be a surprise, so I cannot talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so I guess we'll have to... Thank you, Anna. So I guess that... Uh, as Anna said, yeah. I guess it's time to let you guys go watch other channels. Not that I have anything against it, but, uh, you know, it kind of topic went off what I was trying to show you here. And uh, as I'm already tired, I guess um, I'm going to stop it here. And I hope you'll enjoy making your uh, flower cane things okay hey justin fi finally made it he usually gets in <laughs> after i finished it okay so i am going to go lay down and take the half of the day off as i usually do because i do need some rest i'm telling you i'm so tired i need a whole bunch of rest right now but hopefully i'll be able to if i finish i hope i hope to finish everything that i have to do by uh tuesday the latest and then i can finish i can rest till friday i already did i already did cherry reminded me Better late than never. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you uh, next Sunday. I am not sure. I'm going to actually post a poll because next Sunday is after Valentine's Day. So if you still want me to do one uh, steampunk heart, I'll put a little poll on the uh, community tab of the channel. And... Uh, see if you want to do uh, another heart stuff, the steampunk heart, or if you want to do something else. So we'll go depending on your answers. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday and a good week to come. Thank you for being here with me and happy claims.